Do you want to be the very best like no one ever was? Don't worry, I've got you covered. Here's 10 tips for Pal World in under 10 minutes. Well, there's going to be a lot more than 10 tips. I can't stop myself, but I've got 10 written down that I want to share with you. And then the rest will be bonus. If you find any of them helpful or I just brighten up your day a little bit, be a pal and smash that like button. Of course, we got to be quick, so let's hop right on into it. Starting with tip number one. Now, we've all experienced that base management can be somewhat of a cluster and until Pocket Pair comes up with some type of device that is used for assigning pals to locations, this tip will help you prevent your Kativa from mining when you want to be picking stuff up. Use platforms to elevate your deposits and then build stairs up to them. When you build up a large enough stockpile, you can delete the stairs and that will prevent your pals from pathing to them. Alternatively, if you are a rather cruel taskmaster, delete the stairs while they're up there and your pals will be forced to work until they fall asleep or die of hunger, which if you're using a Kativa to pick up resources, I, I can't blame you for feeling frustrated with it. The difference between packaging one and packaging two, three, and four are huge because this level doesn't correspond to just how fast the pal picks things up but the quantity of the items that they pick up. That was a lot of information, but that was just tip number one. We're going to move on to tip number two, which is going to correspond with that first tip. Packaging skill level is very important, but you will definitely want to improve your pal's pathing further. This can be achieved very easily. All you need to do is place down boxes next to each area that is harvesting resources or need resources picked up and moved. Places like your lumber yard and quarry. And if you have something grazing, you definitely want a box by that too. You'll be surprised at how fast this fixes the issue of your pals not picking up things fast enough. But with that, we're gonna move on to tip number three. This tip is that you wanna prioritize a flat location for your first base. If you need more space, you can always build up, but the wider you can build will ultimately determine the surface area of your base. You can always put down deposits for stone and wood, which then you can grind up for pal and fiber. And while metal is a critical mid-game resource, at the beginning of the game, you can just fast travel to the desolated church, slap down a repair bench, and have all that you need early game. Or at least until you unlock your second outpost. Which brings me to tip number four, which is another tip with two tips hidden inside of it. Getting your second base is a huge game changer. When setting up this base location, you want to prioritize having as many copper ore deposits inside of it as possible. Because any pal with mining level two can be used to automate the harvesting of them. I plan on making a video on the best base locations for this in the future. So if you're not subscribed, you're gonna want to cause I'll be covering it next week. The main reason why setting up this location is critical though, is because you want to save your third base location as a forward operating base. This will allow you to respawn closer to boss battles that you are engaging in, as well as letting you add pals to the battle for extra firepower. Now we're going to take a drastic turn from base building in tip number five. And I can't believe I'm even about to suggest this. We can all agree that selling people is wrong, but syndicate thugs are not illegal to catch because they're criminals. Also, anything you put in a pal sphere is a pal and you can sell pals at the black market for money. Well, it would be understandable if you had some objections to this. I like to think that black market dealer is just turning them over to the police so that they can pay for their crimes and that I'm definitely not selling them into slavery. Let me add the caveat. This is a video game. It does not reflect real life. It's very easy to chop up a Lambo in the game and realize that you can't chop up your dog in real life because it's an actual living thing. With that disclaimer out of the way, if you agree that Lambo is the worst pal in the game, go ahead and tap that like button. And then we're gonna move on to number six. And this tip is all about staying moving because it really is the little things that they added to this game that make it so enjoyable. One of these little things is the fact that you can interact interact well mounted on a pal. See that chest and want to open it up? Go for it. See a pal sphere on the ground? Want to pick it up? Go for it. Pal souls, eggs, the list goes on and on. But if you've ever operated any type of machinery in real life, you know that it's just as painful to 
get up off that seat or to step off that stand up high low to go move something. And I don't like having that feeling in my video game. So Pocket Pal, details like this is why people love your game. And if you didn't know that you could do this, you are not gonna forget it. But now we're starting to cook with fire as we fly into number seven. Playing this game can be incredibly exciting and it instills a wonderful sense of adventure in everyone. You are always curious what's over that next hill, that next mountain, across that stream and on another island. But while you're out adventuring, don't neglect your pals. While they are working hard at your base, they are slowly losing their minds. The sanity meter in the game is a lot of fun. I'm excited to see where they're gonna take it. And while it might be a little painful to have to craft medicine to fix their injuries or psychological conditions, I would never want them to remove this from the game. A nice way to avoid this is to improve your pal's working condition. And this can be something as simple as improving the food they eat. I always cook half of my berries because cooked berries are much better for your pal's sanity. The second farm you'll get in the game is a wheat farm and using the wheat and berries you can make them toast and who doesn't love a good piece of toast with some jam on top your pals are gonna be excited to be working for you but let's get back on top of some base building tips with number eight. Number eight is gonna be all about those roofs because when it comes to building the top of your base, there's really two trains of thought. Do you want a nice aesthetic sloped roof or do you want more surface area for production? If you choose the sloped roof option, you're gonna be very frustrated trying to place these things. The best method I've found to place them is to place the first slope roof on the same level as your wall. This will give the sloped roof that you want a location to snap to. Then you can come through and clean up the sloped roofs that you first placed and finalize your project. If you want a flat roof to increase your surface area, you can build up to two ceilings away from your foundation. However, this does not provide support for a wall as a wall can only be placed one ceiling tile away, which really creates an interesting dichotomy between having your base look good and having your base being more productive. This will be an interesting internal struggle for you if you ever have to start over on a friend's world, which is what tip number nine is all about. You see, after a while of beginning the game in the windswept hills, you might want to spice things up. Thankfully, if you press escape, there is a respawn button that you can press to kill yourself. Then you can pick any of the other spawn points on the map and they will all be perfect for starting the game. This is also a wonderful tip if you are playing on a live server because the server infrastructure is not quite there yet. I've had fun bugs where whenever someone joins one of these servers, everybody crashes and when they spawn back in, they are underneath the map. Now, if you really don't want to respawn, if you are stuck under the map, you can find a surface to climb on. And if that surface comes in contact with the ground at about a 45 degree angle, you can climb out of the ground like a freaking zombie, which is hilarious and can potentially save your time. But saving your time is what tip number 10 is all about. Before I get there though if you want to see more videos like this you know what to do now tip number 10 when you spawn into the game your tablet tells you to seek out the tree it holds the secrets i'm gonna tell you right now this is a lie the tree is a lie it's not there it is so far off in the distance you can't make it there so don't even try at least not yet Oof, let me calm down there for a second thank you so much for making it to the end of the video like subscribe comment all that jazz i'm supposed to say but mostly i hope that you have a wonderful day here's some content of mine that youtube thinks you'll enjoy